Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations coming at you from the Nerd Cave with a little more discussion about so-called antenna currents on transmission lines. This time, I would like to talk about coaxial feed lines and how antenna currents can affect them. Now, coaxial feed lines are generally used with unbalanced antenna systems. And these right here that you're looking at are two very common examples of unbalanced antenna systems. At A on the left here you see the so-called ground plane antenna. And at B you see the, say, the so-called coaxial antenna. These two antennas, generally speaking, are oriented with the radiator vertically and the feed line coming down from the antenna in line with the radiator for as great a distance as possible. Now here, these two illustrations right there and right there indicate a very bad state of affairs for this type of antenna because it is not a symmetrical system when you run the feed line away from the antenna at anything other than along the axis of the vertical radiator itself. So ideally the way that this coaxial line would run would be straight down for as great a distance as possible. Something like that or in this case over here, something like that. Now the coaxial antenna is a very interesting antenna and I would, uh, I think I'll do a video especially devoted to that sometime. What it really is, is a ground plane where you bend the radials down and down and down and down and down until they are actually running straight down around the coaxial cable. Then you blend those radials into a cylinder with a one-quarter of a wavelength electrical length. So you in effect have a ground plane antenna with the radials bent straight down like that. Or another way to look at it is a dipole antenna, a half-wave dipole antenna fed with coaxial cable right through one of its sides and then oriented vertically. But if you run these feed lines straight down and then you enclose them in a metal conduit, for example, if you have a metal mast and you want to support these antennas, you can use, say, a metal mast like this. I'm just trying to draw that mast as best I can to in indicate that the feed line would come right down through your mast for as great a distance as possible. That way any currents that might arise on the shield of the coax will arise on the mast instead and will not cause radio frequency energy to appear in your shack. That said, these radial and uh, wires for a vertical antenna ground plane like this, these radial wires need to measure one quarter of a wavelength electrically so that they are resonant and the whole system then forms a counterpoise to provide an excellent radio frequency ground. You need a good RF ground. Oops. That thing, this program th thinks it's so smart. It thinks it's smarter than I am. It thinks it's smarter than you are. It's not a therefore frequency ground or a therefore ground. It's a radio frequency ground. But anyway, the idea is that that ground should be at the feed point, ideally, the RF ground, whereas the electrical ground can be anywhere. The electrical ground is mainly there to protect against lightning and against electrical shock. So if you do this, you will minimize antenna currents on this transmission line 
and thereby minimize that bugaboo called Dare I do this? Therefore, in the shack. <laughs> okay, there's a way to set this program so it won't do that. And I just forgot to set it like that. This is a great little program, by the way. It's over 10 years old, and I still use it. It's called Corel Draw Version 9. By the way, you're looking at a 1080p video right now. Wonder what'll happen if it if I type that. Is it going to try to change that? 1080p, that means 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. If you have a display that can render that, blow it up to your full screen on YouTube and then adjust the settings to make sure that it comes at you at 1080p and you will see all of this in its grandeur this by the way this particular um, this particular illustration is from an upcoming book of mine about ham radio and shortwave radio so watch for that book I believe that Barnes and Noble and Amazon both already advertise it it is called ham and shortwave radio for the electronics hobbyist ham and shortwave radio for the electronics hobbyist. But for now, I'll sign off and we'll continue on with some more of this wonderful RF in the shack or therefore in the shack discussions. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, signing off for now. See you maybe on 20 meters or 15 or 12 or 17 meters CW or PSK. Until next time, so long.